Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode here on Pastiche of Skin. It's an absolute pleasure to see you. Thank you very much for coming back again to Pastiche of Skin to check out some cool stuff from Gamescom. We're checking out the Xbox uh, Gamescom Live conference. It'll be going live in just about a minute. Probably can't really see it because it's behind me here in the corner. But uh, yeah, I'm interested to find out what the news that uh, Microsoft have for us at Gamescom 2017. It's um, it's um, It's been a... I personally didn't think it was a great year for... Xbox at most of the conferences we've had so far, so I'm um, interested to see what the big news is going to be. Uh, um, Gamescom is like, is is this is this the last big conference? I can't think off the top of my head. Is this like the last big conference where we're going to see before the winter releases? So, what are the big releases we're going to get to see here? What are the new technical issues they're going to be talking about? Um, is this going to be an entertainment platform, or is this going to actually be uh, something else? We'll find out in just 20 seconds. So, stick around and join us. Alright, so make sure I can be able to see you properly whenever we're doing this. <laughs> Alright, let's make sure we've got this good and ground, because I think I've got a few things turned off here that shouldn't be turned off. Let's see... Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, we should be good. <laughs> Alright, let's rock and roll. Get the sound up here as well. Can you hear me okay? I hope everybody can hear me okay. Let's see what the first trailer has got for us. Mm. All right, so we're just going to be just going to be going over the Gamescom kind of intro for this anyway. Looking good, Xbox. Looking good. Feel true excitement. Be ready. Feel true suspense as you idly another few hundred pounds. And by the Scorpio, by the Scorpio, by the Scorpio, by the Scorpio. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm excited or upset by this entire idea. Obviously, we've got a lot of games coming up uh, this year that we're going to be interested on multiple platforms. But um, always give the representation that everything is made for you, by you, and about you rather than actually anything else. Are you coming for me? Alright, I was wondering there, because I'm essentially making sure the subtitles here are actually being reasonably accurate <laughs> for on screen. Um, obviously we're looking at things like Assassin's Creed and the new Bioware game. Oh yes, Dragon Ball, always looking good. Uh, the Sea of... not Sea of Thieves, is it? I can't remember. It's a um, game based off of the Assassin's Creed uh, boat combat game, or boat combat mechanics. Uh, Is this actually literally throwing up words from people? Oh, oh, I'm speechless. Cheers and applause. Right, was that actually literally people in the background that were being subtitled in, even though it wasn't being said? Good job, everyone. Have we got a show for you tonight? World exclusive game trailers, new hardware edition reveals, new services coming to Europe, and of course, new services to Europe. Pre-order announcements. So stay tuned. Yeah, herzlich willkommen here in Cologne, in Köln, that's how we say it in Germany. <laughs> so, on tonight's show, we've got exclusive news on the hottest titles coming out soon for the Xbox One family and Windows 10 PC. But it's not only going to be us talking tonight, oh. no, we have an amazing lineup of special guests that flew in from all over the globe. Ah. That's right. Plus, if you're watching on Mixer and signed in on your, X on your Microsoft account, you'll have the chance to get your questions answered and be with the running to win some exclusive swag, like these special designs. Design lab controllers, but a bit more on that. A bit really? On. Well, I suppose actually, like, uh, get the advertising in, talk about the mixer, and talk about everything they're actually going to be doing on the broadcast. <laughs> Sorry, guys, my nose was actually all blocked up there. I didn't want to actually be like, sending all nasally the entire time. Um, obviously, they are talking away uh, about promotional stuff. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, until the real trailers start, I'm gonna talk over the top of this most of the time. Now, I know some of you at home are probably thinking, hold on. Somebody's missing. Hey. Let's all have a moment of silence for Major Nelson. He's where? No, he's, I mean, he's okay. He's okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! That's a bit of a bomb to drop at the top of the goddamn conference. <laughs> Major Nelson is dead. Let's move on. Let's move on. He'll be making a very special appearance later in the show. So, what do you mean? He's probably going to be talking about Scorpio, and he will probably rise out of the floor or something, tacky and interesting, but we'll still be entertained by it. 
my shoulder the whole show now. I really don't like I, I know this is a, a presentation, but this is way too casual. So E3 is kind of like the big announcement. Gamescom is when everyone gets their hands on. So you have all the flashy trailers, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's hard, I, know, I, know, I know this isn't a keynote speech, so I'll kind of hard like a, a presentation, a conference presentation. So this is... Thank you for having us in your beautiful well, you country. So this is going to be like, a bit drawn out, I'm sure. I, 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 like, I want to grab the controller and skip, but so options. Yay. Jump on to that number, so I'm really excited not to probably meet everyone, shake a lot of hands, and talk about games. A yes, lot. a lot of yeah, hands, Spencer. You have like cosplayers I want to check out, like Xbox Fan Fest, their concerts. There's so much going yeah. on around Cologne, so I love and it. our Xbox booth looks absolutely amazing this year. You'll see much more of that later. Well, please show it to us. Why are we not seeing it yet? <laughs> I'm sounding like a really pernickety motherfucker about this, but uh, I don't know. Like, the, the whole three people on the couch intro thing, I was like, I wasn't massively excited about what we just saw. Oh, there we go. Right. So seven world premiere trailers. Count them seven world premiere trailers for you to feast your eyes on. Delicious. We will be bringing loads of Xbox One X enhanced games for you to check out. Right. Love Minecraft? Then oh boy, do we have a treat in store. This is the place to be for the latest updates on Forza Motorsport 7, State of Decay 2, Sea of Thieves, Player and this is a great Thrones, and much more. It does feel like they're actually doing the intro to uh, a long running 45 minute TV program more than the actual kind of like let's hit you hard and hit you fast with stories. This is Xbox at Gamescom Live. That's a, whole a good lineup. Stuff. That took a lot of to get the VO right because there was a lot of things. I don't know if we're going to be able to squeeze everything in this show, but <laughs> we had to get that VO right. As in, like we recorded that hours ago, so we don't know what to actually say whenever we're put on the spot right now. To show us the latest from Assassin's Creed Origins. Yes. So of course, it was amazing to have you guys with us at E3. Now, what's happened since then? What's kind of the feedback been like? What's been going on? Well, first, you know, E3 was a, a moment really special for us. You know, uh, first being on stage was uh, quite intimidating. Mm. Uh, but the entire team... Uh, no, obviously. Really important moment. Uh, we were working for more than right, the, and a half years. As much as I'm going to be interested in what they've got to say, um, uh, the development of Assassin's Creed Origins is exactly what we expected it to be. Another Assassin's Creed game, but they've, of course, kind of added more RPG elements to it. You will get gear from actually like building up experiences. The location you're doing it in is actually the earliest of the assassins. So a lot of the gear is going to be interestingly different. They have that overhead eagle sight for actually pinpointing enemies and stuff. You actually swap back and forth between them. It's, um, we've seen plenty of material for Assassin's Creed Origins uh, from E3 till now. So the next step and the original creation of the Brotherhood. Yeah, uh, we've done, we've, We've we we've, we've tripped through like they they've given so much of a quick look and deep look while showing us for the first time. I'm of the there really has to be someone to show us that's going to excite me or surprise me. Oh, and you see Jai trailer. All right, let's get to see some story. That'll be interesting. Cool. So that's right, everybody. It's time for the first of our exclusive trailers. Take a look at this world premiere CGI trailer. Whoop whoop. Assassin's Creed Origins. Let's turn this up a tiny bit. Just so they can enjoy it in the back room. Oh no, that's the wrong thing. There we go. Well, we're bringing in our ruler. Oh, you look fucking terrifying. If you are the dealer, I'm out of the game. If you are the healer, means I'm broken and lame. If thine is the glory, then mine must be the shame. You want it darker. Okay. We kill the flame. Cool tune that's actually playing over the top, but I'm sure I'm going to get a moodly cry of strike for this, but... um. It, does, it feels more of a western tone to the song than it actually is a um, Egyptian theme. But I mean, like, what is Egyptian? We were made a dictation on it, but I suppose I kind of like would have enjoyed something that made me thematically relevant. Love that. That looks pretty cool. 
What is this? Oh, I was wondering they were saying they go under a giant tapestry. <laughs> I'm ready, my lord. Let the world build. I'm ready, my lord. There's a lullaby for suffering and a paradox to blame. But it's written in the scriptures and it's not some idle claim. You want it darker. I'm I'm like I'm actually liking the the tone of this read. All right, just kill everybody. That's what your job is. Kill everything. The prisoners and the guards have taken it. Well, the rude sandstorm is in the background. Nice. <laughs> Here's their own weapons against them. The assassins come in the in and out of the sands. So I'm liking the elaborized combat, uh, sword and shield, switching weapons, using pole arms, bows and arrows. Oh, did he catch up? That's awesome, catching with your foot. That's cool. That actually is kind of cool, I like that. I was like, fuck it. Ah, oh shit. Oh man, that may not look like much to you, but I just smacked my head right off of that. Oh, god damn. Oh. I need to be more careful of that. That was right in the corner of a table. <laughs> the eagle always cats the snake. It all starts with one. So the first, so this is literally the first assassin, and he finds people towards his cause. So we might have a bit more of that crowd building kind of thing that was done in uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Revelations, where you might have like a little bit of base defensey things going on. That'd be interesting, actually. I didn't mind that part of the that part that that the later half of the Assassin's Two series, the end of the Ezio trilogy. Putting these historical yeah, names uh, in your games. Uh, that's uh, that's exactly why we love uh, working on Assassin's Creed. You know, uh, being able to recreate. All right, time so it's always really, uh, really interesting. With people of historical figures. So I mean, it's it's kind of going to change yeah, but, yeah, history. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Uh, the alternate history, history of Abstergo has history, been a long, <laughs> long change thing. I'm just wondering what is the framework for this one now. I know they've abandoned the old framework, and then they actually had the gamer playing inside the minds of previous memories. But I'm curious to know what is the framework for the origins going back that far and by going back that far and abandoning the framework system that they had previously do we do, do, they dropped all pretenses like this is a fictional world this is the history this is actually the times of that period and that's uh, not the i don't think it's the greatest idea in the world for a series that's actually been very very blatantly just killing people in history for a long time thrilling because for us it's really uh, the the uh, a way to to deliver fully you know the, the original vision we have uh, talking about graphics but also the story the mechanics the systems mm. uh, we know that having more power uh, will be uh, will uh, will make our life easier and uh, and being able to bring more to the uh, yeah, more to power will make our life yeah. I always it's actually the call for more power in your systems to work from because you gravity gives you so much more headroom to work with but um I'm just curious to know what is actually what's clunking up the engine. What what's, what is it that's actually? Well, you look at the big expanding sands, and it does look gorgeous. It does look very pretty. The textures are on a lot of this. Yeah, it's about draw distance and stuff. I mean, you're no longer actually boxing yourself in the canyon. You can see it from much further. We're going to have active wildlife. I'd be curious about the idea of actually doing shifting sands, tides and shifting sands and windstorms. Could you actually get lost in the dunes if a sandstorm comes through and actually takes you off of your path? Are you going to have... Well, I mean, you probably use the eagle to find your path again. But is, is that going to kind of, like, affect... Or are, 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 we're not going to be massive worlds, but like, constantly shifting worlds, but we might... So that'd be nice to actually have in the open, empty spaces where it's just like sand dunes with rise and fall mattering on the, the weather. That'd be kind of nice. In like, they make really, really nice time lapse video if you actually just Everyone's sat down and used, really like, like shot on it. Yeah, thank you so much, John. Okay, a lot of these games should really require camera systems now because they are that pretty that you indistinguishable backgrounds from reality in a lot of ways. So, hopefully, they actually will consider that for an Assassin's Creed game, even though it probably breaks uh, canonical meaning in some way, shape, or form by doing so. Keep telling people about Mixer, baby. Uh, makes sense. Make sure that they're all there, logged in, so we know exactly how many Xbox users. 
producers and owners are all logged in right now watching our show. And then even though the Sony ones are going like, well, let's find out more about this. PUBG? Yeah, PUBG, right? Yeah. So with the exclusivity of PUBG to Xbox consoles, um, it's keeping me from actually getting into it. I've played a couple of games at friends' houses on PC now, and I can see where the appeal lies, but um, I have so far failed to kill anyone or survive my, anything more than my first encounter with somebody because I was not ready. But I even though a few times I got well equipped and just kept myself down to like the last six or seven, and that was just literally by smart moving, keep myself safe and sound, occasionally running somebody over. I think I killed two or three people that's a, that is a lie. I actually have survived encounters with people because I ran people over with cars. I ran over people, two or three people with cars, and that was an enjoyable experience. It was quite nice. It was uh, pleasing. Oh, that's right, the air bombardments. Uh, I didn't stick around for any of that shit. And that, all right, that the, low, the first I got was actually in that area with the plane, the burned out plane. That was the last location I could survive in, so uh, that was pretty cool. I'm curious with the maps in this, or the map... Is there, um, w will they lead to variants on that very, very large map? Because even though the content's randomly spawning, I think people will actually have preferential locations to drop to. Ooh, that probably came out of nowhere. Well, Blackjack. Hi. How do you two? The frame pan. The frying pan of doom. <laughs> I've just heard that the frying pan is particularly effective. Player unknown himself, Brandon Green. Welcome. We have such an honor to have you here. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thank so you. So really cool. So Battlegrounds, obviously, is one. It's of weird. The I looked at his face, and for a second, I thought I saw like a chubby cheek, so Gavin Free. So how did this get all started? Uh, so I don't I mean the keys chubby, I mean and, just, uh, you know, like, oh, the chubby cheeks, chubby cheeks, that kind of thing. Mod and uh, decided to see if I could make my own mod and Battlegrounds was formed. And then uh, Blue Hole connect, or connected with me last year. Yeah. Moved to Korea and made a game. Wow, you make it sound really yeah, easy. It's so easy, man. It's really <laughs> not. <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's a very modest <laughs> explanation, <laughs> but the dude's obviously yeah, but, put a lot of work into it, so fair play. So I really have to say this slowly because this number is really amazing. Um, you sold over eight million copies. Yeah, we just passed today. that last week. Congratulations! Uh -huh. Congratulations <laughs> indeed, sir. That number. No, One of them's not me. No, and it's good that we don't process it. It's you know we just keep us focused terrifying. on development. It is. It's like brilliant. yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> ignore the numbers except for the ones in my bank account. But yeah, I'm, like, I'm, that's a, that's amazing for him as a developer. I'm really, really happy to see that. It it just hit a niche, and a lot of people were interested in it. And he made it clean enough, and prepared enough, and uh, simplified enough that it took people by storm. And it's been developed with pace and money involved behind it now to smooth out so many issues. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who are going to still have their bits and moans and complaints about it, but I personally didn't dislike anything about the mechanics of the game. It's just something I wasn't particularly ready to get jump into. I've never, I actually have, I've played a fair amount of uh, DayZ and what was the other one I ended up playing that was actually very similar to DayZ? Um, a clip of a guy oh God, I can't even think it off the top of my head. The things like Rust and whatever else. So I think the up rump of those games to PUBG, where it's actually it's uh, condensed down to a single experience, where it's a single event, a single uh, battle, rather than actually wandering the maps and living there for as long as you possibly can, and then getting all your shit stolen. Uh, that was the big expansive version of it, and then this was actually the um, competitive, reduced world of it. Uh, literally the battle royale that we've always wanted for our children. But uh, now they at least can do it virtually instead of actually having to be shipped off to an island and only one of them coming back. If you want a poker hand, you get five bucks, which right. was a chicken dinner. So it was winner went that did say winner went. Everything dinner. sounds so easy with you, like yeah. you just came out I just came it. with this idea, I just made this game. Yeah, winner winner chicken. <laughs> what what what? I, hmm. <laughs> Don't lick his arsehole too hard, folks. <laughs> I mean, the, the guy's modest. You want him to stay that way? <laughs> To be honest, like we really admire you for what you've done and what oh, you've accomplished. You. So yes, so 
it's exactly, I mean, when we're going back to E3, you announced, um, it's also kind of oh. <laughs> No. Uh, no, so I tried, like, guys. Yeah, we don't want to give like an exact date, but we're coming sure. at the end, towards the end of this year, yeah. and uh, like we're coming to Xbox Game Preview, which is great because it allows us to develop with the community. Xbox uh, Game Preview, so early access on like Xbox. Controller fields and how movement feels and all this, and using that with the game <laughs> preview is valuable to us for development. Yeah. That makes sense, yes. Yeah. Well, they've already been integrating controller functionality into the PC version for so long now that literally the only thing left is what the main menu is the only thing that isn't controllerized. Experience on both platforms. And today we want to announce that we're partnering with Microsoft to uh, publish. You're holding hands to get yeah. across the finish line. It's adorable. Exactly. So we want to publish onto. Uh, oh, partnership with Microsoft. Obviously, if you're on Xbox One exclusive, <laughs> give us the wealth of their knowledge and experience to help us make the console version better and faster. And also, but I mean, that that's amazing, of course, because mm. it just means where everyone's going to get a better game. But also, do you get do you get some good perks? Obviously, now that you're Microsoft, <laughs> good discount. <laughs> I yes, hope so. I, I, I visited their campus. And <laughs> yeah, I got a discount. I got a cheap version of Windows 10. I like that. Love the perks. But no, it's great because this publishing deal. And cheap Windows of version 10. As I said, we get yeah. all the, the knowledge that Microsoft have, mm. but we still retain control over development and design decisions. That's important. The game and yeah. it may be frustrating for you guys watching with the subtitles being a little bit delayed over it, but it covers me for the fact that I, I'm going to be talking at times and I can be able to watch things as they're happening. If it just happens to be like something like, wait, what the fuck did I just miss? Slightly madcap and slightly insane, but I mean, I in really a good way. So. So no, yeah. Can you tell us anything about that? Uh, a little bit. So, okay. like, we have, uh, I think, 80 of the best uh, Battle Royale players coming from all over the world. We're flying them in. Are they crazy? We <laughs> have this really cool <laughs> set built for them. It's PUBG uh, Invitational. That, like, get insane. So, yeah, there's obviously going to be very competitive uh, PUBG uh, players. This uh, is uh, leading itself towards a very convenient, simple uh, esports uh, methodology. Um, we'll have solos, I think I'm. Uh, squad yeah, people were complaining about stream sniping, but uh, I, one thing I didn't like was that I couldn't go after I was dead, after I was out of the game, I couldn't see what other people were doing. And I can completely understand why, because you could be in a team and if you switch to somebody else, then you could possibly be passing that information to somebody else. And uh, that's the one thing, by having that not in the game, I'm curious to see what will be done for broadcast and for the esports side of it, because that then has to require a specialist kind of idea and setup where you're doing switchers and you actually have multiple screens and you've got a series of contacts out where you're actually like pulling a live feed from each of the computers and you're out of worry about lag and latency and all that kind of crack. And I think that, that it makes it the idea of actually recording a PUBG stream that's meant to be showing all the players that are involved um, much, a little bit more challenging. But um, I'd be curious to see what it's being done for some of the larger streamers that have actually got this whole idea. Oh, what's this? World Premiere! Woohoo! For Jurassic World? Okay. So are we playing the dinosaur? Yes, we're playing the dinosaurs. Hey, hey, over here, I can't run faster than you. Did you notice that? Hopefully the other guy's gonna survive that actually fell on the wires. Yeah, so, alright, so you're building your own Jurassic World. Okay. Yeah, I like this. I'm on board with this. I've kind of wanted a Sim Jurassic Park for a while. Um, I could lose time to something like this. Oh, I'm on board with that. So, because Jurassic World was such a well, like a built park and actually developed, and uh, they explored the place a wee bit, I would like the idea of actually being able to build my own while also keeping it. So the whole point is, you have to, you know, shit like that can't happen, and you just have to keep people safe. So it's all management. I can get, I, I can get on board with that completely. <laughs> I'm probably louder than the fucking dinosaur. Summer 2018. So that's two. Two out of seven. Well, that's a nice, that, that is actually a, uh, that's a good call. Um, I'm, hello, Windows and PC for that, consoles, my, that's a mouse and keyboard experience, a really, a really any stra simulation like that, or uh, world building or base building kind of game. They tend to be much, much better experiences on uh, mouse and keyboard. It just, it just happens to be the the way you control that ship. 
Aaron, first of all, tell me, what does Gamescom mean to you? Because I know... You know we've, we've been what it means to me? Free moves! <laughs> It is the biggest consumer gaming show in Europe. And for us, this is a big year for games for us. At E3, we showed the largest, most diverse lineup of games we've ever had. And we're taking all those games here, plus we have a lot more we're showing. Yes, because your big list of games was world, temporary, momentary, exclusive timing with stipulations and dual release. Premiere! <laughs> really exciting so we, we talked to e3 about our games lineup there's tons of good stuff in there you know do you have some other i really don't have the energy to actually be able to vamp over this the entire way through and i feel bad actually i feel bad that i might be talking over the top of interesting devs but it's the marketing it's the marketing that actually seems to go in between each one of these that pushes me further and further away nearly every single time i watch one We've also talked about 400 titles that are available back compatibility. A friend of mine has actually started playing Dark Souls 1 uh, 360 to Xbox One. The biggest problem that I ran into with this particular, like this great push, it's fantastic, I'm really glad to see it, is that you need to actually give people an instruction manual how buttons are mapped by default. Because things like the black and white button or back buttons and stuff like the controllers have changed slightly, layouts have changed slightly. You might want to actually reconfirm and give better options in some games that can't do it uh, to uh, reassign button controls. You own Killer Instinct, Halo Wars 2, all those titles. We're gonna update for you for free. Here's the update to the One X. Other games as well, right? Woo! So I mean, there's a lot of games that actually want to get on automatic sampling upgrades. It's the same. And it's the fact that we're doing this, and I'm going like, I mean, you have to like tweak a lot of things to actually make them work because there's like hacks that people put together to get things running. But I'm going back up to Halo Five, great, uh, for like higher res textures, I imagine. But uh, there's a lot of stuff that it actually like older it is, and you run on an emulation and you play it at a much higher resolution. P there's some PS2 games that look amazing. I highly recommend somebody go. If you're watching this video, don't close this video. Keep continuing watching it. But open up another window next to us and look up. Final Fantasy 12, Final Fantasy 12, PS2 emulation, 1080p, and then uh, look uh, and well, and then versus or comparison to the Final Fantasy 12 Zodiac Age. Admittedly, they are fundamentally different games, the International Edition and Zodiac the Zodiac Age, but they graphically the C, the CJ cutscene, uh, not the CJ cutscene, some of the gameplay cutscenes look just as good whenever you run them in an emulation and up up res. And so all the biggest games, frankly, are doing it. If you're a fan of FIFA 18, that will be enhanced. Um, if you're a Star Wars fan, Star Wars Battlefront 2 will be enhanced. All the enhancements. All for the 1X. Everybody's expecting it. All the biggest titles of the year. Uh, Shadow of War, another title on that list. But the thing I love is it's not just the new titles. Also, existing games are going back. So Yay! I think a lot of people will be actually happy about that. The backwards come out of not backwards come out of but backwards uh, upgrades, so that there'll be texture packs for certain games that'll actually come out, and they can actually enjoy them with a lot more detail. Like, give me a copy of Crimson Skies with upgraded textures, or um, hmm, trying to think of other games that I actually really enjoyed on the 360 era that actually might deserve a HD remaster at this point games that may be coming out so do you, do we have some news on that we do uh, we are coming off of a monster e3 where we got to show off brand new gameplay in the campaign Ooh, monster e3 we <sighs> and of course we announced the tearjerker ori in the will of the wisps which is great but guess what got an announcement right now yay exclusive record Definitive edition of Recore. So, like, a upgraded and re, re added, like, more detailed version of Recore. Interesting. Um, I thought, right, is this, is this DLC or is this a remaster? This is the original. This isn't a new record. This is the original record, right? Like I, I'm recognizing moments of this. Well, 
It kind of gives a better explanation of uh, what ReCore's like, I imagine. Because that was actually one of the things where I, I was really interested in it. Ready Master, hey, Resolution HDR. I, I'm getting off about the idea. I'm not getting off on. I'm getting annoyed by the idea, and I'm going to jump off the fucking roller coaster. If we're remastering games that are really not old, that are literally just the last, last damn fucking generation. No! Uh. <laughs> I was wondering there's going like you're not gonna make it out of there. You can't fly. You can glide. You companions? Hey So you're gonna build another version of Mac? And oh uh, there is actually how there is actually additional material in. So I'm not I'm not gonna be quite as annoyed at the release of this because there actually is a new DLC and added car parts, but uh Recore wasn't Massively well received for a number of issues, I think, at the time, but I'm on board with it. I do my I do like my adventure third person action platformers. I love a sci-fi setting. I actually like the concept behind this game. Um it's a game that I it's a game I know I'll never get to play on PlayStation, but I would be on board if it actually came to its availability, but what can you do? This is going to be a Microsoft exclusive! Like a proper exclusive, during one of the ones where they don't actually lie about it. I apologize for my yawning during broadcast, but I mean, it is very, very late here. I'm, like, I'm, watch I'm not watching this even live, I'm watching this hours and hours afterwards. Oh, it's adorable! Ton. Um, my favorite was always Violet, and you learn a lot more about Violet in that um, in the new uh, massive expansion. The cool thing massive expansion cool about this expansion is that if you're already a Recore customer, it's free for you. Oh, yeah, game's okay, coming fine. on August 29th. There you go, so fair play. On Recore, this is the so, remaster for 1x, or if you already own Recore, it's expanded for free. That's the uh, that's actually not a Mm, that's, that's not a big announcement, but it's actually one of the things we're like, you know, we're already going to be re-releasing this anyway. So literally, it's just re-releasing the Game of the Year edition of ReCore, with its DLC content. So, you know, it's an easy sell for some people. So, if I may say this, just on all behalf of German gamers, well, come again to Germany, I'm so happy to have you guys. Thank you, come again! To make sure my audio levels are still good, because I'm watching... So, and I know the game's calm, guys. Being there, they are a lot quieter than me, so, just in general. Regarding Age of Empires, can you give us a little sneak peek on That's that one? We're leaving Deutschland and we're oh. leaving Gamescom tomorrow. Very we are great. celebrating the 20th anniversary of Age of Empires. We're going to have a stream at exactly this time. Age of Empires, <laughs> game series I never got into. Um, I have heard so many of you guys talk about Age of Empires that I'm just. Uh, it's just one of those things where I kind of I just missed. I, there's a gap in my game history. Like I try to cover as much stuff as I humanly can in my life, but there's just some games that you just kind of like you never get into, no matter what. You never get the uh, you never start onto the series early enough, or you just kind of like it doesn't seem to appeal to you to whenever it gets to a certain level. Their hit franchises to Windows 10 in a huge way, and because they're all built on Xbox Live, you can cross play between. Windows 10 PCs and consoles. Crossplay, take a drink. Last week that might have slid under the radar a little bit. We announced that we're bringing Rise of Nations, which is an absolutely beloved real-time strategy game that's currently on Steam. We're bringing that to Windows 10. And guess what? We've unlocked cross-network play between Steam players Whoa. and Windows 10 players. That's I cool. love that. that cool? Right, so this is going to be the continued pressure to actually have everybody connected so that they can actually compete on each other's servers with each other. Um, big things have actually done that, like the Minecraft thing with everything but Sony PlayStation, I think it was. And uh, of course, anything that's going to be a Windows platform is going to have an immediate ease of integration with a Xbox in some way, shape, or form. Asking us, what kind of games can I play with my family, with my kids? So I'm super, super thrilled to be announcing that we've taken some of our most beloved family titles, we've remastered them, and we're bringing Disneyland Adventures, Rush, a Disney Pixar adventure, and Zoo Tycoon out on October 31st of this year. Jesus, I never even heard of any of these. 
83. HDR. Nice. These titles have all been enhanced. Well, no, I know Zoo Chicken. What am I talking about? And you can actually play every single one of these on both controllers. Why would you buy your kids Zoo Tycoon whenever Jurassic World's available? Speaking of my kids, they watched some of the E3 stuff and they loved Super Lucky's Tale. Oh, like, good. Can you tell us yeah. more about that? What's happening with, oh, Lucky. with Lucky? Lucky is, he's doing great. He's still optimistic and he's still really happy. <laughs> what I love most about Lucky, and I get to play these games. Hey, uh, Lucky's Lucky Tale. Is one of the great perks of my job is that. This was a VR game, wasn't it? A game that gives you the traditional kind of platformer feeling, but because of the power of the Xbox, the world is completely alive. It's very modern in that everywhere you go, there's a ton of action. There are characters. Right, no cave walls for us anymore. That's terrible. Too much elaboracy. Beautiful game. I'm excited. It's coming on November seventh. Oh, great. A ton of action is also happening in Halo, and we have really a lot of Halo fans here in Europe. What do we have for them? Well, for Halo War 2 fans, which we know did very well on the PC... I was actually just zoned out there as they were talking about something that actually didn't appeal to me in any way, shape, or form. Is, uh, not just your normal expansion, because this has got a So, Halo Wars 2, um, I played the first Halo Wars, enjoyed a fair bit of it. So, uh, again, still felt the, 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 the crunchiness, the uncomfortableness of control pad combat of squadrons and the selection method for a lot of things. Like they're all or nothing, you know, you just kind of have to partition parts of the screen. And um, Halo Wars 2 obviously looks pretty. But I'm not massively concerned for its release. Uh, I could take on the flood, so it's going to be. Just I could easily fall asleep during this yes. broadcast. And that's uh, coming in 4K with HDR on September 26th. Yeah, of course it's coming in 4K and HDR. That's literally like if, if it wasn't coming in HD, HDR and 4K, then what would be the point of having an Xbox One X? And um, when we're talking about a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff is also happening at game, Xbox Game Pass, right? Yes, Xbox Game Pass is probably the best game, value in gaming. Yeah. We launched it in June. For $9.99, you get over 100 games you can download and play. Uh, we're expanding that to... Which is a fairly decent idea. Um, I would like... That's why I'm waiting for Sony's conference. Like she said, you go like, and PlayStation now is part of PS Plus. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Actually, Dirt Rally just went into Xbox Game Pass as well, one of my favorite games Love from last year, so you should definitely check that out. Now, to celebrate the expansion of Xbox Game Pass, we're giving away Game Pass codes. So get over to Mixer now if you're not already watching there. You should I'm be. not going to go to Mixer, so stop trying to tell me. I'm not going to do it. I'm a YouTube man. <laughs> I trust my YouTubes. They are uh, focused on exclusives. Mm. What kind of updates have we got there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're on my Twitter. Twitter feed every day. <laughs> well, of course, people pick Xbox because we have the biggest franchises, the biggest exclusives, yeah. whether you're a fan of Halo or Gears of War or, or Forza. Uh, this holiday, personally, uh, you know, Xbox One, I'm really excited. Xbox One will be the only console where you can play Forza Motorsport 7, Cuphead, and PUBG, so I'm uh, really excited about that. That's the three also, things we're going to push on. Forza, Cuphead, and PUBG. You're going to like Forza, the sporty side, PUBG, the competitive side, Cuphead, people who have extremely long fuses. Um, what was it, it's like three years for people uh, before we actually got a final deal on that? But Cuphead does look absolutely gorgeous, so don't get me wrong. Enhance for Xbox One X. We want games that will take advantage of that forty percent power advantage, that sixty percent memory advantage. I'm excited to oh, oh. have over one hundred. I'm thinking um, these guys are actually slowly knocking me out. Will be enhanced. I'm, I, I don't think I'm going to make it to the end of this broadcast. I might have to actually stop and restart again at a later time. Of RPGs or sports games or shooters, whatever your type of game is, your uh, these games are going to look and play better on Xbox One X. Amazing. You can check out that list right now, right? If you head over to MajorNelson.com. That's where we're putting it. That's right. what Larry's been doing. He couldn't make it to Gamescom. <laughs> We've got him putting that list up. Hand typing each name. <laughs> I'm going to that list. Shannon, Aaron, fantastic. We covered a lot of ground there. I'm going to try and recap it, right? So This is a quiz. Oh, yeah, let's, you, you can correct me if I get anything wrong here. Over 100 titles enhanced for Xbox One X. And you can check out that list and that's right now. that's today. We were at 4083. So by Crazy. launch, the list will keep growing. Fantastic. Right. Record Definitive Edition announced. And mm -hmm. it's coming to Xbox mm -hmm. Game Pass on August that's 29th. Right. Uh, All right, guys. I'm going to have to call this um, and try to come back and do it again later on. Because I can feel my eyelids two, going in my head. It's going because I'm listening to this. Night with more but it's... Um, it, it's not going in, so I will come back and I will give this another try at another time, and I'll try and finish off the rest of the broadcast.